So when you're deciding what to plant in your tower garden, you're gonna have a few pretty tough choices to make. And one of them is whether or not you want a monocrop or grow all of the same thing on a tower garden, or you wanna do more of a everything on one garden kind of garden tower. So in this video, I'm gonna lay out the advantages of both as well as the disadvantages for both. So you can move forward with the confidence that you're gonna need when it comes to monocropping your tower garden or doing a garden tower. So let's take a look at the garden tower first. Now what I mean by garden tower is something like this. I have kale, I have parsley, I have, I have pole beans, uh, onions, there's a tomato plant, I had cucumbers which I just removed, there's spinach on here, a little bit of everything kind of growing on this tower. And these are more popular for if people only have one or just a couple tower gardens. They'll generally try to grow everything that they can on just the one or two tower gardens they have. And there's nothing wrong with doing a full garden style tower garden. And I always actually like to have one going at any given time, even though I have several tower gardens, I still like to always have that one garden tower because it's, it's just fun. Albeit, it is definitely a lot more work. So let me get into some of the cons with doing the garden tower where you're doing a ton of different stuff on one tower garden. The first and the biggest con with this is nutrient management. My onions and my parsley and leafy greens, they actually require a deep, completely different set of nutrients than my fruiting plants like my tomatoes and my beans and my cucumbers do. Therefore, whenever I feed my tower garden nutrients, I have to be careful to make sure that I'm giving kind of an even blend of all the nutrients rather than just focusing on what the tomatoes need. I also have to think about what the spinach and what the kale and what the parsley is going to need as well. And what that really means for your tower garden is nothing's going to be really fully optimized. Because right now, if I was just growing a tomato plant, for example, I would pull back heavily on the nitrogen uh, because my tomatoes are starting to come in. There's tons of flowers all over this. And I would start to give it a lot more potassium and phosphorus. However, my kale, my spinach, my onions, and my parsley all need a lot more nitrogen. So if I cut back on the nitrogen, then they're going to suffer. And the thing to remember here is I can't go past the target EC, or the PPM, for my nutrients in the reservoir. So if let's say I can't go past 2.1 for my EC and I have all of the potassium and all of the phosphorus and all of my micronutrients and my calcium magnesium that my tomato plant's gonna need, but then I need to add the nitrogen for my leafy greens, that's gonna take my EC way overboard. And likely what's gonna happen is my leafy greens are gonna end up tasting really weird and over chlorophylled and watery and just kind of funky. The other issue you might run into if you didn't prepare for it extremely well, which is kind of hard to do if you're a beginner just stepping into this, is space. So if we take a look at this monstrous garden tower, which I actually just defoliated a ton. I removed an entire vine on the bottom. So this is actually much smaller than it used to be. I've also had to move the plant out substantially from the tower garden in order to get enough airflow. Because when all those plants were growing up on the garden, there just wasn't enough airflow and circulation around. Some of the larger plants started suffocating the smaller plants and I couldn't even get to the parsley. So a lot more planning and a lot more consideration needs to be taken whenever you're doing a garden tower, which can be fun and it can be kind of the exciting, more hands-on part of tower gardening. So as long as you know that and are aware that you're gonna have to take these considerations when you go into it, uh, it won't be anything that just blindsides you. So now let's talk about monocropping your tower garden. So when it comes to what you actually harvest and the overall product, when you monocrop over doing a garden tower, your monocropped produce is just gonna come out a lot better. It's gonna be that way because you optimized your tower for that one plant specifically. This one is cherry tomatoes. It's doing quite well. I have a whole video coming out about this tower garden, so make sure you're subscribed for that one. So when you monocrop, you can really take advantage of you know, being the hydroponic gardener and making sure your plant's getting exactly what it needs. So having said that I do have a garden tower, the rest of my tower gardens are all monocropped. Because really when it comes down to it, um, what you get in the end, your end product, is just gonna be better in a monocropped garden. And this is because you can cater your entire garden's nutrient needs, uh, the water level, the pH, everything, just to that one particular plant. So of course you're gonna get a better plant. Now, the obvious disadvantages of monocropping are going to be you only get to grow one plant per tower garden. So, so if you don't absolutely love cherry tomatoes, then this garden 
it's probably gonna be a bit of a nightmare for you. So there's gonna be about 100 pounds of cherry tomatoes coming off of this tower garden. Uh, luckily, I love cherry tomatoes and I know all of my neighbors do too. So I'll be sharing plenty of tomatoes with my friends and family here. But if you grow, for example, a kale tower garden, or this is my basil tower garden where I have a bunch of different types of basil, this is eventually gonna be completely filled out where we're not gonna see any of the white garden itself, which means I'm gonna have an awful lot of basil, which means you better like pesto, you better like pho, or perhaps you wanna go into business and sell what you're growing, which in that case, you're definitely gonna to wanna to be monocropping your products. Once you step more into a more professional or advanced tower gardening, you're gonna realize the benefits of monocropping far outweigh any of the negatives of monocropping your gardens, and you're probably gonna start wanting to pick up more and more tower gardens. If you are interested or in the market for tower gardens and you pick up one from the link I have below in the description for this video, but I'm gonna send you Mastering Your Tower Garden, my full education on Mastering Your Tower Garden for totally free. It's a promo I've been running for a little while now, and I just really love setting people up on the right foot when they're making such a big investment like a tower garden. So I really hope this has been helpful to you. And until the next video, let's grow together. Monster cute. Which one did you find, Luke? Show me yours. Let's have this one. Let me see, Luca. And that one. Wow. And that I one's found huge. that one. All right, bud. I found this one. Wow. Whoa, another one. Can you show the camera? That's a monster. He got it. Nice score. Can you hold those two up? Show me how big they are. 